Did I hear 909? We're on? Well, good morning. Good morning online. Good morning in person. Good morning, peace. Everybody good? Can you hear, can anybody hear me out there in online land? I see the messages scrolling here. Awesome. If, if there are any sound issues uh, online, just uh, let us know in the chat and we'll do, it, do what we can. I'm very happy to be here. My name is Matt Deach. I am at Pilgrim Lutheran in Superior on their ministry team. Pastor Don is gone today. Happy to, to drive up and, and share today. I haven't been here probably in 10 years and probably at a bake sale or a fish fry here. And it's... it's Overdue for, for me to get back. Any announcements that anybody wanted to relay today? All right, then shall we follow the prayer of confession found in your bulletin? Holy God, we do not deserve to be in your dwelling place. We have not led a blameless life. We have not done what is right in your sight or spoken the truth that you have sealed in our hearts. We have done evil to both those we love and to those we refuse to love as we should. Hear our cry, God of our hope, as we confess that which weighs us down. Redeeming God, save us from our foolishness. Gather us in your righteousness and redemption. Forgive us, for we are seeking your light and your salvation. Cleanse us of our brokenness. Because we are not worthy to enter God's dwelling, God came to dwell with us through the body and being of God's Son, Jesus Christ, Christ came to be with us, amongst us, and for us. Hear the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our strength, without you we are weak and wayward creatures. Protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside and cleanse us from all evil that arises from within ourselves, that we may be preserved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Psalm 115, read responsibly by verse. O Lord, who may dwell in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? Those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart, who do not slander with their tongue, and do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors, in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest, and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And the Holy Gospel today from Mark 7. When the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles, and so forth. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the traditions of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. 
In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandments of God and hold to human tradition. Then he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother, and whoever speaks evil of father and mother must surely die. But you say that if anyone tells father or mother whatever support you might have had from the Korean that is an offering to God, then you no longer permit anything for a father or a mother, thus making void the word of God through your tradition that you have handed on. And you do many things like this. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. When he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about the parable. He said to them, then do you also fail to understand? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile, since it enters not from the heart but the stomach and goes into the sewer? And then he said, it is what comes out of a person that defiles. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All of these evil things come from within and they defile a person. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, good old-fashioned change. Change. We crave it. We resist it. We fear it. We, we get restless without enough of it. Positive change and healing change typically isn't interested in letter of the law rules. Positive change and healing change moves at the speed of trust. Change moves at the speed of trust. Our bishop said that a couple of weeks ago when she met with our ministers in Superior. I think she's right. When we resist and fear change that nags at us, sometimes the rule books of tradition and personal preferences come out, kind of like they did in today's winding text. In that long road, the Pharisees and the scribes in today's gospel became so focused on the letter of the law externals of faithfulness and rules that they neglected to examine the spirit of the law nature of their own hearts. Their rules favored walls of exclusion over spirit-led windows into faith. Ah. Oh. It happens so quickly. It happens so quickly to any of us when we don't take that extra slow to anger, slow to speak moment to focus and filter our reactions. Well, I ran into this when I, I preached a long time ago at a shortened service that included more plain English liturgy versus all the high church stuff, kind of like we're, we're doing here today with the hybrid model. Because in this context, liturgy just doesn't service as well and isn't as valuable since the service is kind of short and, and we have to adapt. Well, afterward, someone immediately and curtly approached me. They wondered why we weren't reciting the letter of the law, Apostles' Creed, 
which they ascribed was the absolute foundation of our faith that needed to be said every single time. Eventually, they roped the church's pastor into that conversation, and he told them the spirit of faith was being shown in that service through prayer, through song, through meditation. He told them the the letter of the law, Apostles' Creed, well, certainly valid, would actually sound like Chinese to someone walking in the door who'd never been to a Lutheran church. He said it was okay, even applaudable, to use a more understandable access point to faith to help them and us. Well, I later learned that the concerned member was so upset by the response that they actually started telling people that pastor who spoke the truth in love, they actually said this. They actually said that that pastor was against the Chinese and it was a real problem. Boy, yeah, that, (laughs) that incident sounds silly and perhaps petty, but it points to times when we're all prone to tiptoeing into our own versions of of selective listening and selective truth-telling that defiles. Perhaps because we, in that moment, lack big-picture trust. Or perhaps we fear loss of a tradition we've held dear, and we just overreact on a bad day. Maybe sometimes in our very human moments, gosh, I know I've had them, Maybe we don't, in that moment, trust that the spirit of the law is enough because it's not quite moving on our terms and our schedule. Maybe in those moments, we we just justify moving it along a little, at least this time, by monopolizing a conversation, by taking those facts and turning them an eighth of a turn, or leaning into, into drama out of fear, boredom, or good old-fashioned attention-seeking. And in those very human moments, those very understandable moments, when we're just people, when we all get caught up a, a little more than we'd like, may we keep bringing ourselves back to the truth that sets us free. Yes, that spirit of the law, truth, everybody here embraces. That good relationships in proactive Christian community are the foundation of perspective and peace. If we want to embrace fruitful change in any organization, including the church, May we continue to be game for these holy experiments together that involve more showing and less telling. Like the pastor who asserted that the Apostles' Creed can sound like a foreign language to those without a faith background, we will get better at explaining religious things in plain English ways. And in those moments, we notice ourselves struggling with this. Maybe. Maybe it invites us to think about what we're reciting and confessing each week. Maybe that questioning increases and deepens our faith. The new church emerging out of COVID space is craving the spirit of the law conversations. People want to know how to access those communities that will change their lives in ways that will allow them to best impact others. From everything I know about Peace Lutheran and Poplar, thank you for being that kind of community. Thank you for being creative and open 
to what else is possible as we all evolve together. As evidence this morning, your warm welcome to me. Thanks for keeping your humor. That's classic and needed. And thanks be to God for change built on trust in our Creator's simple and powerful promises. It is enough. Amen. Lord, let our hearts be good soil, open to the seed of your word. In the prayers of intercession this morning, the prayer response will be, Lord, let my heart be good soil. The response, open to the seed of your word. And as we examine the spirit of the law and nature of our own hearts, let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, change happens at the speed of trust. Help us remember your guides of faith, hope, and great sustaining, unfailing love that the gifts of your spirit may bring our hearts back to doing justice, loving mercy, and walking humbly. Lord, let my heart be good soil, open to the seed of your word. Jesus Christ, bless, empower, and comfort parents children, and all who teach. Guide their teaching, learning, and discernment about best practices and the opportunity of now. And keep them safe. Lord, let my heart be good soil, open to the seed of your word. Holy Spirit, you promise never to leave and forsake. Be near us now as we remember people and needs silently in our hearts. Lord, let my heart be good soil, open to the seed of your word. Into your hands, Lord, we lay our petitions, trusting in your grace, love, mercy, and truth. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of the Lord may it be with you all. Be well in Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
Let us pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Communion will now be distributed. The body of Christ is broken for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So now, so now we leave this space of worship. And well, so much of this road is uncertain. We know some things that are as solid and sure as the ground beneath our feet and the sky above our head. We know God is love. We know Christ's light endures. We know that the Holy Spirit is here, closer to us than our next breath binding us to each other until we meet again. Go in peace. Be well in Christ. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn, 801. Change my heart, O God. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. Are the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me, this is what I pray. Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, 
may I be like you. Go in peace.